So with this video, we're going to talk a little bit about the membrane potential. And what I want to do is first just kind of describe to you what the membrane potential is, and then we'll go into the specifics of how it's actually created. So I've got kind of just a definition of what membrane potential is here on this slide. Basically, cells have a difference in charge on the two sides of their plasma membrane, and that's what's known as the membrane potential. So if you look at this diagram over here, I've tried to represent this. I've got these little positive charges. We've got a lot of them on the outside of the cell. We have many fewer on the inside of the cell, and that's what this difference in charge means. So we've actually got ions that are positively charged, and we've got a difference in the amount that are on the two sides of the membrane, and this is what that membrane potential is. One of the things you'll notice if you look at this closely is we've got far less positive charge on the inside and far more positive charge on the outside of that plasma membrane or cell membrane. And so because of this, we say that the membrane potential or the difference in charge on the two sides of the membrane is negative on the inside relative to the outside. So as you're looking at this, I always get the question, well, there's positive charges on the inside, there's positive charges on the outside. Why can we say that the inside is negative? And here's the reason. Basically, the inside is less positive than the outside. And another way of saying that the inside is less positive is simply to say that the inside is negative relative to the outside. So this is our membrane potential, this difference in charge on the two sides of the membrane. Um, and when this becomes important, in particular in 227, is with skeletal muscle cells that are contracting and then also with nerve cells that are conducting electrical signals. So that's why we're going into this now right before we go into um, the muscular system and start talking about the skeletal muscles because the membrane potential is involved in the contraction of skeletal muscles. So as we're kind of building our understanding of what membrane potential is and the fact that it's important with skeletal muscle contraction, there's another term that you should start to become familiar with and that term is resting membrane potential. So when we talk about a skeletal muscle cell at rest, this is a cell that is not contracting. When we talk about a nerve that's at rest, this is a nerve cell that's not generating an electrical signal. So when we have a skeletal muscle cell that's at rest or a nerve cell that's at rest, they both have a difference in charge on the two sides of the membrane, whereby the inside is negative relative to the outside, and that difference is equal to negative 70 millivolts. So I have seen so many textbooks make this so incredibly complicated in their explanation as to why there's a membrane potential and what is creating the membrane potential and what is maintaining the membrane potential. Um, a lot of times when I read texts that discuss this, I almost feel like they're doing it backwards. They're not doing it in the order that it should be done in order for it to be intuitive. So what I'm gonna try and do with our next few slides is talk a little bit about three things that are contributing to create that membrane potential. Because again, I want you, once you've, you've done this folder and you've done the activities associated with this folder, to really understand what membrane potential is and understand what's creating it so that when we get into skeletal muscle contraction, you can understand why a change in membrane potential is actually the signal for a muscle to contract. So I've got three things on the next three slides that I've listed as creating this membrane potential. And I'm going to talk about this first one here with this particular slide. The first thing that's involved in creating the membrane potential are the sodium potassium pumps that you've learned about previously in the class. So if we look at this diagram over here of a cell, Again, the cell you can see is positive on the outside. It's relatively negative on the inside. And I've drawn these little black triangles all around the plasma membrane or cell membrane of this cell. And each one of these little black triangles is representing a sodium potassium pump. And you may remember that sodium potassium pumps move sodium outside of the cell membrane. So I've got a little arrow that's indicating that sodium's being moved out. And at the same time, they move potassium in. 
So we've got these sodium potassium pumps that are all around the membrane that are moving sodium out each time they pump. At the same time, they're moving potassium in each time they pump. But there's something that you should know about this movement of sodium and potassium. And that is when a sodium potassium pump pumps, it's going to move three sodium ions or three positive charges out. So I've got that represented here in my diagram. And as it's moving the potassium in, it's only two potassium ions or two positive charges that are being moved in. So each and every time one of these sodium potassium pumps pumps, that's embedded in the cell membrane, we have three positive charge going out and only two positive charge coming into the cell. And that right there is enough to give us a difference in charge on the two sides of the membrane whereby our inside is negative relative to the outside. There's another thing that's going on with this that I want you to remember, to be aware of, um, because it's gonna come up again a little bit later. So remember that as these sodium potassium pumps are working and they're pumping sodium out continuously and they're pumping potassium in continuously, that we're getting this concentration gradient of sodium and potassium on the two sides of the membrane, whereby sodium's at a higher concentration outside the cell and sodium's at a lower concentration inside the cell and potassium, because it's always being pumped inside the cell, is at a higher concentration inside and at, it's at a lower concentration outside, okay? So again, this is the first thing that is working to create that membrane potential. I want to go to the next thing now that's involved. So we're going to kind of add layers to the complexity here and add layers to what's actually involved in creating this membrane potential. So if you look at this next slide, I've got our same cell positioned here. We've got those sodium potassium pumps that are found all throughout the plasma membrane. They, each time they pump, are moving sodium out and they're moving potassium in, and that's giving us a concentration gradient of sodium and potassium, but it's also giving us an electrical gradient because we're moving more positive charge out and less positive charge in. So we are already just due to that positive on the outside and negative on the inside. A second thing that is helping to create the membrane potential and maintain the membrane potential is the fact that cells are factories, so they're producing things all the time. And one of the things that cells produce are negatively charged proteins. So if you look at these little green diamonds that I've now drawn into our cell, this is my representation of some of these negatively charged proteins that we would find within the cell itself. These proteins are large, and because they're large, they are not able to cross the cell membrane to exit the cell. And so all of these negatively charged proteins that the cell is producing stay inside the cell. They have nowhere else to go. So they also contribute to the situation that we've got whereby the inside of the cell is negative and the outside of the cell is positive. Here's the last thing that sets up the situation so that we've got positive on the outside, negative on the inside um, in relation to the cell membrane. So here my diagram gets a little bit more complex. You can still see those sodium potassium channels. You can still see those negatively charged proteins that are present here. But what I want you to notice now is that we've also got some channels. So I've noticed in the past that a lot of times students confuse sodium potassium pumps with sodium channels and potassium channels. These are not the same things. So I want you to look at our cell membrane. We've got these sodium potassium pumps. They're still doing that job of pumping sodium out of the cell and potassium into the cell. And they are setting up this concentration gradient whereby we've got higher sodium outside, lower sodium inside, because they're always pumping that sodium out. We've got higher potassium inside, lower potassium outside, because they're always pumping the potassium in. So our little black triangles, our sodium potassium pumps are doing that, they're creating that. But we also have all throughout this membrane, and I've drawn these in now, sodium channels that allow only sodium to diffuse across them. 
as well as potassium channels that allow only potassium to diffuse across them. So I want you to look at one of these sodium channels for just a minute. They're represented by these orange rectangles. These sodium channels allow sodium to pass through them by diffusion. And you may remember that anytime that something's diffusing, it's moving from a higher concentration to a lower concentration. So I've got this arrow that's indicating that because we've got a higher concentration of sodium outside the cell, which was set up by the sodium potassium pumps, sodium is only able to diffuse from outside to inside. And you can see we've got a few of these sodium channels that's allowing sodium to leak back into the cell or diffuse back into the cell. We've also got a whole bunch of potassium channels. So they are represented by these red ovals. And you may remember that the sodium potassium pump has set up this situation where we've got a higher concentration of potassium inside the cell. We've got a lower concentration of potassium outside the cell. And because of that, when potassium diffuses, which is a passive transport process, it's only able to move from an area of its higher concentration to an area of its lower concentration. That means that potassium is going to move through these channels from the inside of the cell to the outside of the cell. So we've got positive charge that's leaking back in. We've got positive charge that's leaking back out. But the kicker here, and you can see this if you look at this membrane and you compare the number of potassium channels to the number of sodium channels, we have a membrane that is much, much more permeable to potassium. So it allows potassium to exit the cell at a much higher rate than it allows sodium to leak back into the cell. So again, we've got basically three things that are setting up the situation where we've got a higher concentration of positive charge on the outside of the cell. The sodium potassium pumps are pumping more positive charge outside than inside. We've got these negatively charged proteins that are on the inside that are lending themselves to making the inside negatively charged. And then we've also got diffusion going on as well, but we've got much more positive charge diffusing out of the cell than we have positive charge diffusing into the cell. So diffusion is also leading to a situation where we've got more positive charge outside than we have on the inside. And those are the three things that working together set up and maintain that concentration gradient so that we are positively charged on the outside of the plasma membrane and negatively charged on the inside of the plasma membrane. This again becomes important in muscle contraction and also in the conduction of nerve impulses, which is when electrical signals move down nerves. Because the first thing that needs to happen in order for a skeletal muscle to contract or in order for a nerve to generate electricity is we have to change this membrane potential. We actually set up a situation where for a short time, the inside of the cell becomes positive and relative to that, the outside of the cell is negative. And when we have that change in membrane potential happen with a skeletal muscle cell, that's the signal that tells that skeletal muscle cell to contract. When we have that change happen with a nerve, that's the signal that tells the nerve to generate um, an electrical signal down it. So just kind of wanting to really get you familiar with the membrane potential and what creates it now so that we can talk about what changes it later and you can have a good understanding of how that works um, and a good understanding of what triggers skeletal muscle contraction and the conduction of nerve impulses.